We are live and recording. Hello, this is Vishal, award-winning author, international speaker, publisher, entrepreneur, and most importantly, six times severe mental health conqueror. And I'm here with the amazing, please introduce yourself. Michelle Jenkins, author of Mob in Action, Mothers of Black Boys, Unleashing the Brilliance of Boys of Color. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to have you on. Michelle is someone who I've been working with for a number of years now. And when I talk about success and using your book to create success and create things that you didn't think were possible for you, she's a perfect example of that. And just before we started this interview, she was telling me about some of the things that have happened recently. And her book's been published some time now. So I want to take this opportunity to interview you, Michelle, about how it's been with your book, what you've created with it, what it's helped you do. Yeah, we're going to have some fun. I'd I'd love to hear more about how this has helped you and how your, your book and people creating their own book can help them. Yeah. So how long has it been, Michelle, since you first started writing your book? When did you first start out on your journey? I started a year and six months ago. Okay. A year and six months ago. And how did you find out about me? Online, on Facebook. I saw this like handsome, amazing, charismatic person that offered this amazing opportunity. And I, I took advantage of your five days being with you to get to know you and work with you and, you know, get a little bit of your like energy of like what you commit what you're committed to and what you teach other people in terms of writing a book. You know, I was looking for something and it happened very quick, very quick. Okay. So you heard me speak at this free event and you saw the value in what I was teaching. You decided to enroll in my program from the moment that you enrolled in my program to the moment that you had your book in your hand. How long was that? It was, it took me about a year and two months, I believe, for it was finally, yeah, right. And it could have been a whole lot sooner. It's just that I had so many other things happening in my life and I was diligent. You know, I put, I definitely put the time in and maybe overanalyze, which is not the thing to do. You know, it's like, get the book out, not get the book right, <laughs> like, like mm -hmm. you said. But uh, yeah, yeah, it was um, a very different experience for me. And everything that's happened thus far, like you initially said, I did not expect the results, but I definitely went in to, to do the work and, and okay. be coachable. That was so, so very important to be coachable. Even when what you requested was unreasonable, <laughs> I was, that's when you're coachable. When you don't want to do it, you don't think you can do it. Like why? It's like the wax on, wax off from the karate kid. He didn't know why he was waxing the car, but he found out that those moves really supported him in fighting. You know, so yeah, you made a request to promote the book and sell the book very early on. Like I was in the first chapter and I was taken back like, wait, the book hasn't been published yet. You want me to sell it at a, a, a pre-launch discount? And I said, okay, I'll do that. And I did it. And within 48 hours, I think I sold 70 books, something, it was some crazy outcome. Like I did not wow. expect that. And I hadn't written the book yet. And that propelled me to stay the course. Like I knew I had the, the money of these wonderful people supporting me. And I knew I had to get the job done. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that early launch for me of selling it really impacted everything and made a difference for me. I had a, a spreadsheet, who paid, how much they paid, how many books they ordered, where I met them, who, like I was very organized from day one with, the, with putting a structure in place because it was required. It was a mm. big game at that point. <laughs> That's amazing, Michelle. And how how was the process of creating the book? How did you find the whole start to finish process of creating it? Well, I thought it was brilliant. You know, I've been in personal development for 45 years and I've done a lot of courses with like extraordinary human beings on the planet and I've become a leader in that industry. And when I put myself in your course, it was like being in a personal development course for book writers, because your initial foundation of how to go about the process was like a no brainer. It's like, I can do that. That's like, and it, it just was a structure that was put in place that allowed me to smoothly write my book. I had friends say things to me like, 
um, has this been a challenge for you? Or do you have, what is that term they call um, that um, some kind of um, fraudulent thinking or something about yourself? I had none of that. Imposter syndrome. Imposter yeah, imposter syndrome. syndrome. And I'm like, no, I have none of that. I actually didn't. It was a free flowing experience. The book just flowed for me, you know, and being part of the conversations along the way, you know, the uh, videos that I got to watch, the conversations you gave, I, I took those bits of training, all of it very serious. And I implemented it, implemented it to the point where I got to meet celebrities and I got to hand deliver them my book and write. And they were excited about getting my book. And these are people that I had thought about and, and, and created and just existed from my thinking. They showed up like I couldn't believe how people were responding and, you know, like almost miracles, miracles happening. And it was because of the level of intentionality behind it. You know, it was a level of excitement behind it. And the level of like giving birth to something like that was my experience, you know, like literally it was inside of me for so long and I didn't even know it. And then all of a sudden, you know, this conversation comes up with my son and uh, it went viral about my son. And, and it turned out that this was like my, my niche. It was almost like God said, you know, this is where you need to be and this is who you need to be with. You know, I, I spoke about this once before that when I was in the uh, boot camp, the wild boot camp that the individuals that were in breakout rooms with me, we all had the same experience. Like we were meant to be here. This wasn't like an ordinary course by an ordinary person. This was a, a course put together by someone that has a heartfelt intention to impact the world, to impact people, to do all that could be done to support people in reaching their goal and getting their books published. Like, it was very, very obvious to all of us. It was a spiritual experience. And we all talked about it in the group. And we're like, I feel the same way. Yeah, when I met him, it was like, yeah, so you definitely bring a level of like connection, almost like a, a, a universal soul connection to people. You know, your passion and your commitment is very, very obvious. You know, and that that had me just be totally enrolled, totally enrolled. And it's like, I brought a bunch of other people involved. You know, they, they're writing books too, because they're enrolled. And wow. what you bring. Yes, and you did a great job with that. How about the results, Michelle? What kind of results have you had because of your book? Astonishing results. So I travel a lot. I have friends all over the place. And when I, whenever I travel, I do my research in advance to find out about bookstores and places I would want my book. So I've done that. And right now I have my book in six bookstores in different states. I have my book in two libraries, which was totally not expected. And the way that came about was I was invited to be on a panel. And the panel was a conversation about uh, books being banned in schools and in libraries. And on the panel, there was the president of the libraries in Boston. There was the um, director of the library that I was at. There was a librarian who was a teacher on the panel. And then there was me, the author. And when I was invited, my thought was, why aren't they inviting me to be there? This is like their niche. This is their conversation. They've been having it. They know all about it. And I really don't know much about it. And I gave that conversation up immediately. I started doing research. I went, I was on the panel. They were coming up to me about the book. They were coming up to me to have conversations. I sold books. And the director, I walked over to him and I said, you know, I'd like to have my book in your library. And he said to me, oh, I'm going to be ordering a, a supply of your books tomorrow. And he did. And hadn't I taken advantage of that opportunity and step into the bigness of it, opposed to thinking it, it was something too big for me, I would not have had my book in that library. And I've since then, I have taken on that whatever anybody asks me to do, I'm doing it. I don't care if I have no history of it, no, no knowledge of it, I'll do what I need to do to step into that. So it's it's been not just an author with a book that's you know thriving, but the development and the growth of myself over here. And I was a big person before this, but I've expanded it into a whole new level of play in life and even producing a movie, which is not something I expected to have happen. You know, I've been on radio talk shows. I've been on like so many podcasts. And, you know, I was on several podcasts before the book was, was even published, talking about my wow. book and on the radio before it was published. So it's um, definitely like an extraordinary opportunity. And it's something that I know will impact the world, you know, boys of color. And it's going to make a big difference even after I'm gone. The book, the book will live on. You know, I've given, I've given copies of this book to my grandchildren. And I wrote them like a really beautiful, like 
you know, just share about me and my life and about who they get to be in the world. So it's a passing on a legacy, like seriously passing on a legacy, you know, from what happened with my son and myself. Very nice. Michelle, tell us the name of your book and the subtitle of your book. It's Mob in Action, M-O-B-B, and that stands for Mothers of Black Boys. And the subtitle is Unleashing the Brilliance of Boys of Color. And the book is for everybody and anybody. You know, I'm just African-American and that's the title I chose. And I've had single people read my book with no children and said that it made a huge difference and it altered like who they are for themselves. And most of the books actually are owned by white people because I have a circle of white friends. And so this book is for anybody and everybody. You know, I just want people to know that the title is that title. And there's segments of it that pertain to boys of color because it's a very unique uh, lane in the world in raising children, you know, because of what they deal with. But, you know, everything else is for everybody. That's amazing, Michelle. Your video just went off there, but it's okay if you can't get it back on. I want to I wanna ask you this one last question, which is, what's your advice to other authors or other people who are thinking about becoming an author? That the thinking of it is one thing, but the doing of it is a whole nother game. You could think about it for so long, and I know people that have, but it's about putting structures in place and it's being um, mindful, like that there's a goal, there's the creation. I mean, one of the things I did, I put myself in a, um, a group of individuals, we called them writing salons that, that wrote and we would get on Zoom together and we would write, we'd go on mute, have our classical music playing or whatever it was and we'd spend time together writing. And that made a huge difference. Even though we weren't talking or we didn't really look and see each other, knowing that you were in a circle of people that had the same mindset and the same goals and you got to read some of what you wrote and they got to respond to that. And even times when those um, salons weren't available, I took it to a whole nother level and I started creating my own salons and the reason I did that, because if I created it, I had to show up. I had to be there. You know, it was a pull to continue the process. But yeah, if there's a desire, get it out. You know, the world's waiting for people. You know, someone said to me once that you could take all of this, and, and you probably have said it too, you could take all of this inside of you to your grave. No one will ever see it, ever know it. It'll never be left for individuals to be impacted by it. Or you could like step up and really be in the game and, and get it complete and surround yourself around people with the same mindset. That's amazing, Michelle. Thank you so much for that. And any last words of wisdom before we finish? Yeah, to um, not let life get in the way. You know, like stuff comes up during any process of whatever we're doing. And it's about still taking that time you know, whatever's going on, you may not feel like writing, you may not, you know, you may have something come up that could interfere with the process. But you once said, commit to five minutes, commit to 10 minutes, commit to two minutes. Because once you start the process, you turn that two minutes into like a half an hour, or an hour, and you get it, and you get it done, you start biting it off and biting it off and biting it off. And before you know it, you're like at the last chapter, and you're emotionally moved as you read your own book and can't believe you wrote that. You know, so it's a, just a beautiful process. And uh, one that I'm so, so grateful that I got to experience. Amazing. Thank you so much, Michelle. Yeah, thank you, Vishal. Thank you so much.